Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm Alec, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> you look like somebody that likes music, right? Am I right? <laughs> oh, you are? That's what I thought. I love music too. Yeah, I love listening to like rap, you know, rock and pop music. I love that stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, music's great. Oh, hey, speaking of that, uh, have you ever heard of Prozac? Wait, whoa, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 <laughs> I'm hearing myself now. <laughs> Not that type of Prozac. The band Prozac. You haven't? Oh, great. Because I got a lot to tell you about that. Because this is quite a story. Prozac was an animated band that was popular in Canada in the late 90s. And then came over here to the United States in the early 2000s. So there's really only two ways that you'd probably stumble upon Prozac's work nowadays. The number one and most likely reason is that, say you're on Disney+, Plus, you're having a big old nostalgia binge, and you're just like, oh, I kind of want to watch some of the old Disney Channel original movies. So then you go through their little list that they have on there, and then you see, oh my god, is that Lindsay Lohan in a Disney Channel original movie? I kind of remember Get a Clue. It was good, it was good. You know, I'll check that out. So then you hit play on Get a Clue, and then you're greeted at the very beginning with this. And you're listening to this song and you're just like, oh shit, oh shit, this, this is kind of a bop. Yeah. Ooh, who is this? Dang. I have to remember to check the credits for this song. But then you start actually watching Get a Clue, and you're just like, oh shit, Brenda's song is in this movie? And then you just completely forget about that song at the very beginning until the credits, and the song starts playing again, and you're just like, oh shit, oh shit, it's the song from the beginning. I gotta remember to look up who plays this song. And then you look at the credits, and then it says, Get a Clue, performed by Simon and Milo. Or the number two reason, if you're like me, you have Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, or GameCube, because it's the skating game you had if you were raised Catholic, and you decide to play it one night, so you pop it into your old dusty PlayStation 2, and then you start up the game, you pick your character, obviously the character that you made way back in like 2005, or whenever the fuck this game came out. When the fuck did this game come out? 2003, Jesus Christ, was I really six when this came out? And you start off in the home world, Hollywood, and you're greeted with this song. Nice. Nice. And you're like, oh shit, oh damn, I remember this song. I remember every single song. I'm just practicing. So you go into the options, you hit up the soundtrack, and you see that Get a Clue by Simon and Milo is playing, and you're just like, oh shit, who the hell is that? Or maybe you see that the music video for the song is unlockable as one of the movies on the game, but you have no idea how to unlock it because there's no walkthroughs for this freaking game that say how to unlock it. And I'm sure as hell not going to 100% this game. This game has been out for over 15 years. I'm not going to do it now. Who do you think I am? So then you look up Get a Clue by Simon and Milo on the internet, and then you see this video. And then you're just like, wait a minute, they're animated? They're cartoon characters? Disney had an animated band? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> There's more to the story, so just hold on, hold on. So if you were a kid in the early 2000s when Get a Clue was coming out on Disney Channel, you might have seen this music video during the middle of the commercials. It features Simon, whose head looks like a Twitch emote, and Milo, who was one of the original cartoon himbos. There's animation interspersed throughout scenes from the Get a Clue movie, trying to entice you to watch it. The full animated Get a Clue music video has Simon trying to seduce a girl to falling in love with him, and Milo, who is just a dude supporting his boy, because, you know, boys support boys. And yo, I'm just saying, this girl that Simon's trying to get with, she's just flirting with every single guy. Like, what the hell? I'll say it, Simon doesn't seem that bad. He's taking you on trips. He's putting you in robot costumes. He's taking you scuba diving. Like, hello? I mean, come on, the guy even saves you from an oncoming train. Like, old-timey stuff. Shows up in it with his little Charlie Chaplin mustache. Not the other guy's mustache. And then you immediately ditch him for a guy who's on a rail car? Like, come on! He saved your fucking life! The least you could do is say thank you. So who are Simon and Milo? Well, they're the band members of the band Prozac. And they came over to the United States. They had to rebrand themselves as just Simon and Milo because they were working with Disney and uh, Disney sure as hell was not going to be associated with a band called Prozac for obvious reasons reasons. So Disney distributed a Simon and Milo CD that's kind of like a mishmash of songs from Prozac's first two albums, as well as Get a Clue. So if Simon and Milo didn't start with Disney, where did they start? Well, they started looking like this. Oh, Milo. That's a, uh, it's quite a different look. So in Prozac's first album, Hot Show, they have 
the origin story of Simon and Milo called The Legend of Simon and Milo. And luckily there is an animated video made for it, so let's check it out. In a distant time, in a distant place, there was a great war. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't really expect the origin story of this animated band to start off. There was a great war. And sent them into fields of battle. Oh my god, that guy just fucking died. Simon and Milo have blood on their hands. In one of these countries, and one of these armies, there was a man named Simon. One day, Simon was chosen to be a part of a special sea mission as part of his country's grand invasion strategy. There's invasions? Simon's fucking conquering villages, man. He is taking people from their homes and ripping them apart from their families. Hiding around the corner were dozens of waiting enemy ships. The battle was fierce. Jesus, when I saw the Get a Clue video, I was not expecting for things to get this intense this quickly. Ships are sinking, people are dying. Simon found himself in a struggle with the tall, handsome Milo. The tall, handsome Milo. Like, even the announcers was just like, yeah, Milo could fucking get it. <laughs> they were well-matched opponents. It appeared as though they were locked in a dead heat. Bro, Milo is about to kill Simon. <laughs> Where's the music again? <laughs> All at once, there was a thunderous noise from the sky, and a brilliant light ripped apart the dark clouds. It settled on Simon and Milo and their struggle at sea. Simon and Milo, a great unseen voice announced from the sky. Ugh, what? <laughs> You have been chosen to live in a time that is not your own. Sentenced to walk the earth in search of true love. Ah yes, the classic tale. True love will bring two enemies together and end their fucking war against each other. <laughs> and all at once, Simon and Milo are transported into the present. Through their epic quest, these former enemies found friendship, using an abandoned castle on the Isle of Man as their personal studio slash compound. What? Now not only is there an unforeseen voice, but now they're taken away to present time, and they're using a castle as their base of operations and now they're just like you know what let's fucking make some music dude <laughs> they're just like bro i know i was just about to fucking kill you but like do you play guitar this is the story of simon and musical wizard milo again they're just like this is the story of simon and musical wizard handsome buff man himbo milo who who cares about that little runty boy, Simon? Only their friendship keeps Simon going from port to port with the hope that the right girl will capture his restless heart. Whew, I am spent. <laughs> so that's the legend of Simon and Milo? That's what's happening here? Okay, on their Wikipedia, it says, In the Prozac Story video, Simon and Milo are over 200 years old. Yeah, that's right. Those two are over 200 years old. It's canon. But we're, like, working on Captain America rules here. They're still the same age, like, genetically, but they were born in the 1800s. Right in the 1700s, because this came out in the late 90s. Fuck. It also says on here, Simon and Milo fought each other in a 20-year-old war called Ochiaki. This lore goes deep, you guys. <laughs> so now would be a good time for me to introduce you to the two musicians who are actually behind Prozac. Their names are Jay Levine and James Brian McCollum. Jay and James met because they're both members of the Philosopher Kings, which is an R&B band in Canada. And the inception behind Prozac is kind of a funny story. It came out of a fist fight, actually, between me and Jay. And after show in Montreal, he just pushed one button too many and I gave him a punch. Ah uh, yes, the best origin stories always start from getting fucking socked in the face. So obviously there's similarities between how Jay and James and Simon and Milo got together. They both fought each other. <laughs> However, Simon and Milo's fight took 20 years for it to get to its peak. So that's how the band got started. They put out an album called Hot Show. It did pretty well. But, like, why didn't they still keep making stuff with Disney? I mean, Disney is Disney, you know? Like, something must have happened, right? Maybe we can look at their other music videos and see what might have happened. Tell me, Simon, what seems to be the problem? A little sexual frustration. Oh. My libido's gone berserk. Oh. So let's hold off on the sex play. Or I don't even know your last name. Oh, oh no. I'm trying to get away from ecstasy. Oh no. We'll cut up together and we'll make some love. Then play shake tag, baby. 
Oh no! Oh my god! Oh! I did not come to touch. I like to watch. I like the way you bounce, bounce. Well, I guess we know why they're not working with family friendly Disney anymore. Simon and Milo are horny! <laughs> the worst thing possible! <laughs> Go to horny jail. So yeah, you kind of go through their discography and you just kind of see that things get a little bit more risque than just pining for a girl. You got strange disease, which is about a sexual transmitted disease. I got a strange disease. Uh... Oh my god, what the hell did he eat? He ate a fucking boat! Who knows what could have been on that boat. Scurvy. I just love that Milo's right there next to Simon. Just like, don't worry, man. You'll get through this. I know you have a fucking weird ass disease, but you know what? I'm here for you. Look at this. The nurse called the fucking horny police on Simon. I got a strange disease. Oh, bye. Sorry, you're getting incapacitated for having a weird disease that you don't know what the hell it is. I got a strange disease. Oh my gosh, now he's in an insane asylum? Like, God, he was in class just an hour ago. Man, the system works quick on people with pre-existing conditions. Ooh, did I get a little political there? Uh-oh, remember to vote, everybody. <laughs> oh man, here comes Milo here to save the day. Oh, he's ready to fuck shit up. Oh my God. Kicked down the door. And then a water cooler floods an entire hallway. He creates rivers with a simple kick. Oh my god, he's so cool. He's surfing, playing guitar, and saving his boy. Like, come on. Milo is your fucking guy. So even after Milo saves Simon, Simon is still hung up over this girl who caused him to get this strange disease in the first place. So much so that he imagines them dancing on top of a skyscraper together. Oh yeah, it's very romantic. Up until he yeets himself off the side of it. But don't worry, Milo is there once again. You know, Milo is always there to help you when you fall, Simon. Even when you fall off a fucking 80-story building. So now let's check out the music video for Europa, which was the first song that Jay and James wrote for Prozac, right after they fucking punched each other out. The song is about Simon remembering a girl from Spain that he dated that was the one that got away, and wondering if there's still a chance that she thinks of him. But, uh, knowing Simon's track record, I'm a guess no. Oh my god, sometimes I forget that they live in a castle. Tell me, Simon, what is on your mind? You seem a million miles away. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, amigo, but it was a year ago on this night that my dear Esperanza dealt her final blow to my vulnerable heart. Twas so long ago. It seems like he met this Esperanza at a fashion show they were both at, because as you know, Simon and Milo are living the high life. Do they do that at fashion shows? They all get it out at the end and they're just like, oh, now we're gonna do a music number. Dance. Dance. Whoo! Whoa, 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 hold on. That's a TikTok dance. That's one of those low effort, TikTok dances. You just move a little bit of your body, do some stuff with your hands, easy to remember in 30 minutes, and there you go. Put the song on TikTok and dance to it, and it'll get a hundred million streams. That easy. Simon and Milo, if you're not going to do it, I'll do it for you. Yeah, you're welcome. The classic bull kiss fake out. I hate it when I fall for those. You're just going in for a little smooshy smooshy. Oh no, a raging bull. Oh my gosh, run away. <laughs> Milo knows exactly what to do. He's just like, don't worry, Simon. I've got this. I will fend off the beast with nothing but the shirt off my back. The bull's getting in on the dance. Everybody now. Na, 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 na. Now let's watch one of my personal favorites of theirs. It's not me, it's you. Once again, they are still in their fucking castle. <laughs> Hello, you've reached the Prozac compound. Yo, Simon, you're right next to the phone. It seems like you're waiting for that phone call. Why don't you just pick up instead of letting it go to answering machine? Hello? Hello? Simon, I was thinking about our talk last night, and the truth is... Oh boy, Simon's getting dumped. What else could fucking happen next? Ah! What's going on? Why are we in the real world? Everybody, we're in the real world. Mayday, mayday, we're in the real world now. 
I like how in this gymnasium, there's Simon and Milo's heads on this basketball court, and there's banners for Simon and Milo. I just like to imagine that somewhere in the world, this gym still exists, with these still in the gym, and like, it's in a functioning school, and like, the high school students just come in one day, and they're just like, who are these cartoon characters on our basketball court? These are mascots? They're just two guys? <laughs> Simon and Milo are just like the mascots for like one high school somewhere in the world. We are the East High Prozacs. <laughs> Dude, these cheerleaders scare me. They get up all up in your face in the camera, and you're just like, oh my god, what did I do? Extra, extra, read all about it, newspaper spin, woo, 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 woo. It's not me, it's you, Simon. I'm just saying you're a fucking cock. <laughs> Are these girls doing another TikTok dance for us? I'm just saying, the material's here, you guys. Let's get to it. I'll start. Take it away, CC. <laughs> now both Simon and Milo have to go on a Maury-esque show in order to confront all of Simon's exes at once. Like, jeez, man, maybe it is you. Simon, obsessed with perfection, can't find true love. Little bitch boy. <laughs> Milo, ambiguous best friend of European origin. Yeah, that sounds about right. I like how Milo is just still there for his friend. He even goes on a national talk show and he's just like, I'm here for him, man. Ma'am, I'm here for him. Gab Gabby, let me speak. My name is Milo and Simon is my best friend. I almost killed him with a sword once, but now I would kill for him. And these, these women, the things that they've done to him are unspeakable. Where are you from, Milo? I don't know. <laughs> God, God, they're getting too close. Oh my god, we're back at war! Oh my god, Ochiaka number two is happening, Simon and Milo, hold on, look out! However, instead of focusing on this battle going on around him, Simon calls this girl instead, yeah. He probably saw a fucking hole and was just like, I should call her. And then suddenly Milo and him are being chased through the streets by an angry mob, probably because he committed war crimes while in the service, I'm just saying. They're back at their castle, the only place of refuge for these two. Oh my god, it's all the cheerleaders! They're in the music video! They're animated! Are they- are they real people or are they just cartoon characters? What's happening? Oh my god! <gasps> they dissed them in the real world and now they're transforming themselves into cartoon characters and they're coming for them in the cartoon world. <laughs> 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 So now before we move on, I want to watch one more music video for their song, Be As, which is one of their more inspirational Be Yourself songs. The music video is about Simon and Milo going around and encouraging people to embrace who they are and who others are, whether they're gay, in an interracial relationship, a different race than someone. It's honestly great to see that Prozac, whose core audience were in their early teens back then, were taking a stand on these issues in this song. But some of the lyrics, I'll say it, nowadays are a little questionable. <laughs> Be as white as you want to, be as straight as you want to. Maybe you shouldn't be a proud boy about how white and straight you are. And that's coming from a white and straight guy. <laughs> now, I do want to quickly follow up by saying they continue after those specific lyrics by saying, be as black as you want to, be as brown as you want to, be as gay as you want to. It's not a white pride song by any means. I just wanted to single those lyrics out because they obviously had good intentions for this song, but some of the lyrics I wouldn't want in a song. <laughs> and if there is a way that you and I could both be free, Keep it up that Milo's just from somewhere in Europe. We don't fucking know. Alliances can be cruel when you're alone without nobody. Oh, thanks. I'm with two guys in like their mid 20s and 30s now in school. Now I'll never get beat up. Don't let anybody stop you. I am Sarah from Chicago, Illinois. Wait, what? Now they're having like a viewer submitted portion of the music video? <laughs> My name's Dave. He's black. I'm from I find it weird that the white skinhead looking motherfucker is the one who's saying be as black as you want to. You're sending some mixed messages here, you guys. Be as shy as you want to. And I go to Washington High. Did that kid just say he goes to Washington High? Is he like doxing himself on this song? What? I just have everybody bugs me at school. Be yourself. Tag yourself. That's me. Be yourself. Be as white as you want to. <laughs> uh oh is that is that simon doing blackface 
I mean, there could be like the argument. It's just like, oh, that, there's an alternate version of Simon where in this alternate universe, he happens to be black. But you know what they were doing. They're obviously just putting Simon in different races and whatnot. Instead, just like, let Michael go out front and sing over his face. Be all, be as black as you want to. There you go. You got Michael there. Don't make your white character black. That's animated blackface, guys. And now you're making him put... Oh, no. This isn't a great look, you guys. I'll say it. I know what you were trying to do, but it didn't come across that way. But obviously, this music video is from a different time, alright? I'm by no means here to cancel Simon and Milo. I'm just here to make a video about them. Also... Let's not forget that, like, 90% of the song is pretty progressive for nowadays, and for when it came out 20 years ago. Alright, anyway, moving on. Uh, where are we in the history of Simon and Milo and Prozac? So our boys Jay and James, they put out the two albums for Prozac called Hot Show and Saturday People. They even made a VHS with a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, as well as most of the music videos that they made. And one of the behind-the-scenes bits for this VHS is them getting mobbed by fans, and all the fans are just, like, pre-teens or young teenagers. All these kids are fans of these horny cartoon characters. <laughs> It's just funny to me, okay? There's some other fun little tidbits here and there on this VHS, it looks like. They have, like, how they made Simon and Milo videos, where they show, like, the storyboards and the pencil test and the character designs. It's nice. Now, this is when Disney comes into the picture. They make a compilation album called Ready, Ready, Set, Go under Simon and Milo because Disney wants them to clean up their image, and that's when tensions start to rise. As Jay and James say in a Reddit AMA, they eventually couldn't stomach going through what Disney wanted them to do. Disney wanted them to change the look, as we can obviously see most evident with Milo and a little bit of Simon, and they wanted them to clean up the lyrics because there ain't gonna be no talks about sex on our Christian Minecraft server. And Simon basically went on strike. Yeah, Simon, fight the man. Wait, Simon? The cartoon character Simon basically went on strike? He's just on Disney Channel in between commercials, they're just like, you're on, you're on, and he's just like, no. And you know what? I'm totally for that, you guys. That's great. Stick with your artistic vision, and and be true to yourself. So after their little jaunt with Disney, they made another album called Cruel Cruel World. As you can tell, it looks a little different. They did make one music video for one of the songs off the album, When I Think of You. Uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of scary. <laughs> when I get this feeling down below, <laughs> oh my god, he's got a fucking neck now. Oh my god, kill it. Oh my god, get it away from me. Oh my god, it's gross. Ew. <gasps> but after Cruel Cruel World came out, Prozac kind of faded from the limelight. Both Jay and James lived in different parts of the world, and so Prozac was just kind of shelved for a while. UNTIL almost 10 years later, the boys are back. Jay and James get invited to perform a reunion concert at the Atomic Lollipop Festival in Toronto in July of 2015, and the place is sold out. They're amazed about all the fans coming out, even dressing up like Simon and Milo, like in this little part where they debut a new song. Oh god, it's so cringy. I mean, those fans, they're just loving it. They're having fun. They haven't seen this band in almost 10 years, but Jay's just up there just like, oh god, was this a good idea? <laughs> I'm sure he's glad that he's making fans happy, but like, he's gone on record that he's a little bit shy, so I feel for him in this moment where he's just like on stage and he's debuting a new song and they're just, they're sitting. <laughs> it's so awkward that even the presenter gets in on it and he's just like, I gotta fucking liven this shit up and James is just there, he's he's trying, he's like, he's like, yeah, alright, yeah, we're all having fun here and Jay's just like, not today, man. <laughs> If I was in that crowd, I'd just be laughing. I'm just like, <laughs> does anybody else feel awkward right now? <laughs> So they perform this reunion concert, they put out the new song, they see that fans are still receptive to the music, and they're still coming out to see them perform, and now Jay and James, they get together and are just like, let's make another album! And you know what? I'm glad they did. After about two years of working on the album, they finally put out their first new music video in over ten years called Love Me Tinder. It's about how Simon would obviously be trying to find love using Tinder in the new age of social media dating. Love me Tinder. So 
first things first, Simon doesn't have a neck anymore. Thank fucking God. The animation isn't as up to par as it was before, but obviously they're all doing it independently now. It's independently funded, so it's completely understandable. At least they're trying, you know? So what I'm gathering that the story of this music video is Simon hooked up with a girl over Tinder, and then the girl stole their cat named Miles, and who's to the rescue but none other than goddamn Milo on a goddamn motorcycle. Look at him go! Milo is able to track down the Tinder girl and their cat Miles to a club for cats, which if that business hasn't been made yet, I call dibs everybody. But the bouncer stops Milo from entering, but knowing Milo, that won't stop him so easily. And Milo being the savior that he is, he doesn't even take out the guy with the fist. The way that he's gonna settle this now is just to give the guy some tickles in order to get into the club. <laughs> Then suddenly the Tinder girl starts a fight in the club, which causes a whole chain of events leading to Milo saving Miles and being able to take him home. Look at that, he looks so happy, cat in the sidecar. Love me Tinder, make it right, rescue me tonight. I just love it, I just love it when the boys are back. The boys are back together! <laughs> it's so beautiful. Bro, I got actual tears going. Look at that. So Prozac puts out the music video for Love Me Tinder. They also put out their album Forever 1999 in March of 2017. And they're back, baby. I think this is when they start kind of going on tour a little bit. They go on tour. They play the new music. They play their old music. Everybody's happy. Look at all these fans. They're all cheering. They're all having fun. Woo! What I like in the live shows is that they have these inflatable heads of Simon and Milo that Jay and James play behind just to let you know who's who. And it's nice. They play the music videos in the background, and everybody is having a good time seeing Simon and Milo live. So what's next for Prozac? They put out a new album, they go on tour a bit. What's next? Well, do I got a thing for you. They decide to make Simon and Milo into a show, into a series. It's called Prozac love addicts because Simon do be trying to love he do be doing that what the hell are all those bumps Simon you have an STD I'm leaving Suki wait now they're just being blatant about strange disease being about an STD so thank you I'm not going crazy Simon I cannot help you if you don't show me what the problem is all right fine it's these bumps Ooh, what a great shot. <laughs> you know Miles is your fucking bro when he's just like, Dude, just show me your dick. Just show me your fucking dick. Ooh, I might be able to help you with those love bumps. Can you guess what our solution is? Yep, that's right. Hypnotism. I want you to think back to the first time you ever had love bumps. So they hypnotize Simon into confessing how he got these bumps in the first place, and he says it goes back all the way to when he was six years old. This little horny motherfucker. I had a crush on a girl named Stacy, but she rejected me. Later at the urinal, I noticed I had love bumps. I think those bumps are nothing more than a physical manifestation of Simon's fear of heartbreak. Oh yeah, you think? Simon, if you do not overcome this crippling fear of rejection, you will never find the love that eludes you. You're right, Milo. See? Oh my god, his dick is brought down from the gods above. The angels above have bestowed us upon us. This heavenly dick, his dick is healed! <laughs> Hello? Suki, please take me back. I don't have an STD. It's just a manifestation of my fear of heartbreak. Oh, great. I still don't want to see you anymore, Simon. I don't understand. Ooh. Sad face emoji, sorry. Sad face emoji, Jesus. Head ass looking like a fucking emoji himself, I'll say. A little sexual oh, my dick's falling off! Now unfortunately, obviously, this show didn't come to fruition. They didn't get enough views or likes in order for them to get funding for it. However, there is a bit of an elephant in the room, obviously, if you watch that. Uh, who's that lady? So this took a bit of detective work and a bit of problem solving skills on my part in order to kind of connect the pieces because there isn't really an official word from Prozac on who that is, but I've come to the conclusion, and I'm pretty sure this is right, that that is Katie Shaw, who in the concert footage of Prozac actually playing live, is their hype woman. She sings the female vocals for their songs whenever they're playing them live or when they make appearances on shows. And I'm Katie. However, I also found out in an episode of the Admontanian podcast, shout out, in an episode that they did with James McCollum, aka Milo, that Katie is actually Jay, aka Simon's real life wife. Simon found love. Confetti, confetti, party horn. Confetti. <laughs>
this is just some guy on the fucking internet congratulating you on your marriage that's already happened for several years but i didn't know until fucking yesterday also i'm guessing that that's katie because you can see that she has a tattoo in real life on the same arm that the character has a tattoo in the animation however i'm just saying in this shot the tattoo is on her right arm and the next shot it's on her left arm can we please keep the continuity in between shots everybody i'm just asking i'm just asking politely please however after the series didn't get picked up unfortunately jay and james decided that they are finally going to put Simon and Milo to rest. So now they go on a farewell tour called the Never Get Over You Tour at the end of 2019. I'm at least happy that they were able to get in the farewell tour before COVID-19 happened. It played their final show at the very end of November of 2019. And now Prozac is done. It's literally dead. They had on their poster for the farewell tour. It's an end date. They're fucking dead. They're dead. <laughs> it's just kind of unfortunate because I feel like they would have so much material to use for Simon in this new age of like TikTok. They can make entire songs about Simon being a simp or him buying a girl's only fans or getting into e-girls and whatnot and all the mishaps that he gets into and Milo has to drag him him out and help him out. The material's there. Make an animated TikTok. There you go. Of Simon just bobbing in his head and how he's being a simp and Milo's just in the background playing guitar. I'm mad about how many likes they would have gotten. How many millions of streams they would have gotten. It's just like, they would have gotten so big on TikTok. They could have come back. But what we did get of Simon and Milo and Prozac was great. And I'm just glad that I was able to go down memory lane and tell you all about this crazy stuff that I found out just from looking up one damn music video that was on a video game that I played back when I was like a preteen. <laughs> but I still don't know how to unlock the damn music video on the video game. How do I do it? Somebody let me know. I just hope that Jay and James are happy where they are. They look back on Prozac fondly and they now moved on doing their own stuff because it was great it was great i got to make this video about it and tell people all about it because the entire history of this band is crazy it's just so weird how horny they are anyway that's gonna be it for this video i just wanted to talk about this random band from my childhood that is so weird i mean it was an animated band before the gorillas the gorillas happened in like early 2000s they beat them by like one or two years way to go prozac way to fucking go if you like the video make sure to give it a like let me know if you ever remember anything about prozac or simon and milo if you remember them from get a clue or maybe you actually did listen to them way back in the day maybe you're from canada and you remember them i don't know also make sure to subscribe to my channel i might be making more of these videos where i talk about something from my past that i think is interesting or weird or not talked about as much like simon and milo or like my last video about the other siders from cartoon network make sure to check out that video if you are new here you can check me out on social media if you want to my twitter is at alec combs and my instagram is at electrode also if you want to check out something else i'm doing make sure to check out my podcast hey gotta gotta plug it i gotta plug it it's called screenplay the improvised movie me and two of my best friends we get together we talk about a movie or a tv show one of us has seen recently and then we use that as a prompt to make up our own movie screenplay right there on the spot where we act out all the characters make up all the dialogue all the settings all the action right there on the spot it's a lot of fun for instance we made our own studio ghibli movie and also we made our own hunger games parody those are a lot of fun i highly recommend those two episodes just make sure to check out the podcast it's on YouTube every single episode is a video podcast and you can also check it out on any podcast streaming service that you use and now we're pretty much done okay here's a little tidbit that I found funny from one of Simon and Milo's music videos bye bye good morning Simon I trust you slept well will you be searching for true love today yes I will Stacy the computer but first be a sport and let Milo and I try out that new electronic video game you developed for us electronic video game